Drive Drive Comedy Tour. That's at the Romo Fijo on June 3rd. So that'll be all next week. Uh, Guardians are getting going pretty soon. Pitchers and catchers are starting to report for the duty. Pinchers. I love the pinchers. Pinchers and catchers mm-hmm. out there. Cactus League Baseball coming soon to WM of us. Guardians, um, pinchers, and canchers uh, <laughs> report out there Friday. Some other teams have already gone. You know, my White Sox have Mike Clevenger now, and they are still in the midst, I guess, of trying to figure out if he's slapped his girlfriend or something, but he's practicing with the White Sox. They're, he's fully participating in spring training. They have their spring training in Phoenix. The Guardians are there in a good year. Where is that? At the, at the, it's called the Goodyear Stadium? Goodyear Ballpark. Goodyear Ballpark. Mm-hmm. There you go. So pitchers and catchers for the Guardians this Friday, and then the full squad the following. That can't be right. It's only four days. Let me see here. Yeah. Yeah, it's coming up. Well, no, it says Friday 17th and then Friday the 21st. That's not right. Friday the 17th, w- Tuesday the 21st. Oh, okay. Right. I see what you're doing. Yeah, they're, the, the 17th and 21st are not a week apart. Well, it depends well, on you how gotta you double do check math. all the information you get from people. People who, who are professional communicators, you gotta double check all their information. But the preseason will begin one week from Saturday. Wow. Guardians will play the Cincinnati Reds on the 25th at Goodyear Ballpark opening day for the Guardians. MLB opening day. Uh, Guardians will play uh, the Mariners in Seattle. On March 30th, and then the Guardians' home opener is a week later. They will again play the Mariners, but here uh, in Cleveland, April the 7th. Hopefully we'll be somewhere. I know that we're getting preempted one time for preseason baseball. March the 3rd, we will not be on because you'll be hearing the Guardians playing someone. But uh, for opening day and the home opener, your Cleveland Guardians will be playing the Seattle Mariners. Who have, remember Manny Acta? Yeah. He's their third base coach. Manny Acta was the skipper of the Indians when I moved to Cleveland. And he just got the gig. He and I moved here at the exact same time. Coincidence? Or fate? I mean, I I assume. Are but, you moving uh, to Seattle soon? No. Imagine. A great city, though. Uh, but no. Boy, that's the thing, too. When you move around in sports like that, you know, it'd be weird to be like the manager of a, of a ball club and then it doesn't go so well so you lose the gig and you want another gig but there's no head opening for you so they go want to be the third base coach better than nothing yeah i guess mm-hmm. i will yeah right but you're always looking at like the next big time opening that there is so anyway for people who are excited for Major League Baseball to get underway. Your wait is almost over. Once football season is over, the thoughts of young men turn to the spring and the crack of the bat at the ballpark. Well, okay, you talk about moving. I mean, radio is similar. If you, whatever happened here and you weren't here anymore, but the only positions available were a number two guy, would you not take it? No. Would that, that would be the- I, you know how many number two guy... All, Gigs I got offered in my career. But what I'm saying is, so, like, like you're you you're the main point? guy here, okay, and whatever happens, you're, I don't know, in the scandal, whatever. You're not here anymore. Scandal. I don't know. Scandal. <laughs> I like our head goes to scandal. Yeah, they found know? out that you faked the phone call. Yeah. <laughs> you know, your scandal. But I'm saying, so, there, and there's no one's hiring for a uh, head of show. So, but they're like, hey, you could be a number two guy. Do you take a number two guy position to stay in radio because it's what you love and it's what you do? Yeah, I guess. But I mean, they'd have to. They'd have to make my rate. I mean, you're not going to make that much. Nah, you're not going to you make got, as much but, as a number you, two guy. But you gotta get cl- depends on where you are. Right. You gotta get close. Well, it's kind of like you're, that. You're gonna be the number two guy on this up and comer show in Tulsa. Oh, he's great. He has the name of a bakery item. Cruller. Cax and Cruller in the morning. <laughs> oh, no. Your name's the not Rock on the show. of Tulsa. Uh-uh, you're yeah, not yeah. on it, babe. You're number oh. two. Cruller in the morning. Mm-hmm. All right, babe. Dunk your Cruller in your coffee. Well, there's a lot of number twos that have their name. I would say, as a uh, as a stipulation of my deal, my name's got to be on the show. It's going to have to be Cruller and Cox. 
You mean, I see what's happening here. You mean if Pound Cake gets a show in Tulsa Mm -hmm. and they go, hey. We got an opening. I've got a second chair spot. Come on in. You just had your big scandal in Cleveland. Big scandal. (laughs) You're trying to wash that stink all over you. He only got one side. He's canceled in Cleveland. (laughs) Cancel in Cleveland. <laughs> Can you imagine it? I can't even come back to like my home city to do like radio and retire. Because I got tired. Like I'm just saying, like work until well, yeah, hang your jersey on the rafters. No, or? no, no. Yeah. We're talking about if Alan got in trouble and had to be quit, and then you if I had to be quit. <laughs> and had, to be quit. <laughs> I had to take a sec. Yeah. And if you became his boss in Tulsa. Well, I would treat him the exact same way he treated me. That that's only right. I would give him the same respect. You'd shoot him with a gun? Daily? I've never shot him with a gun. A fake gun? I've, well, those are two very different things. <laughs> Ask somebody if they'd rather be shot with a gun or a sound effect and see yeah. what, uh, you knew what I meant. See what they give you. Yeah. Mm, you ain't coming back from that. And I, I no, I listen, very you, t- weird, you gotta, I'm saying, you the, wouldn't, the golden rule in showbiz is, the golden rule in showbiz is, stay on the air. Right. It doesn't matter what you're doing, stay on the air. So, yes. So that's you, what Manny Act is probably doing. He's like, whatever, oh, no, I'll take I'm, a third base coach. Absolutely. And then, and then just like you would be in Tulsa and then you see an opening. It's the nature of, it's the nature of the gig. Well, here's the problem with that though. There are all kinds of people who are overqualified for gigs. Because they go, well, we couldn't afford that person, so they don't offer it to them. So you don't know what's going on out there. Now, Pound Cake, and this is why we hector him so much, although less these days because he's a grown man, he can make up his mind. But for a while, the reason we were giving him such a hard time was that was the perfect time for him to be leaving the nest and doing his own thing. No responsibilities at all. Well, he also came in... Guns blazing with big dreams is like, I'm Pound Cake. I love radio. All I want to do is have my own show. Which is what you're supposed to do. By the time I'm 30. Yeah, where does time go? It just (laughs) flew right on by. (laughs) On the toilet, brother. Oh, my God. Mm -hmm. I I guess he thought 30 was farther off than it was. It just, yeah. Yeah, it all flies by. I've been doing this for 30 years, and I have no idea where it all went. No idea. So, anyway, if Pound Cake was offered a show in Tulsa, and he hit me up, and he said, hey, man, this is post-scandal. Post-scandal. Right? You is don't after, have a lot of options. This is after it's revealed that I was uh, uh, making up uh, bits. Uh, <laughs> that all of your phone calls made Every single one Spuds of McEnzie. my phone calls was a paid actor. <laughs> no, Spuds McKenzie, ironically, a real person. Got it, got it, got it. Uh, they go, hey, this pound cake guy speaks highly of you. Uh, would you like to come to Tulsa? He said you guys some, have some sort of a history. Mm-hmm. And he then he was giggled. A, he's the reason your show was so successful for mm-hmm. all those years. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sure. Now, Pound Cake, would you, would you hire her, Mary, as she's lathering up her legs mid-show? Absolutely <laughs> I'm still able to... Not. What? I'm still what having she a doing? conversation. I can't I'm see putting her. lotion on. My legs are itchy and dry. Come on, homie. What? <laughs> what? Are you wearing a dress? I'm wearing jeans that have holes in them. You're pulling your jeans up to lotion your legs? Yes, my legs are itchy. I don't what, understand are we why boring this is you? a problem. What? I'm contributing to the conversation. I'm just <laughs> also putting lotion on. <laughs> oh, man. It's not like I'm, I'm sitting on the ground, laying mm. down, taking a nap. Mm-hmm. I'm just lotioning my leg. She has morning sex. Next thing you know, she's trying to stay lubed up all the time. You know it is. <laughs> Listen, I don't ever she's get stay to have. creamy. I do not ever. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's peeing outside the window right now. His whole penis is out. Where? His whole no penis way. Is out. <laughs> hey, hold me. Come on, dude. Dude, he's just jiggling. Look at that. It's like that dude we saw in the Bahamas. Oh my God! I've never seen. My face is so red. I've never seen. He yeah. flopped his whole hog out. He had the whole thing the out. The one time there's like no cop. There's cops crawling up and down this street. This guy pulls his hose out <laughs> it was, to drain the lizard. Nothing. Well, he was like shaking his hand around, and yeah. I thought he was like squirting a water bottle, and I looked over, and I was like, oh, Are you no. sure he was peeing? I yes. am positive Are you he sure was it peeing. wasn't something else? No, no, he wasn't no, doing no, that. Okay. No, it was, no. oh, he wasn't stimulated. It was too long. It was too long. <laughs> yeah. He all saw the, me lotioning you, my legs. Yeah. 
The old leg lotioner over here. I was here. going through my knee hole of my jeans, and he was like, yeah, there it is. Well, yeah, the thing is, there's too much glare on these windows. You can't really see in. You yeah. can't really see in. And so when the sun goes down, we can't see out. And it drives me crazy when people will walk by. You know, I'm in this studio from like quarter to 10, 10 o'clock on. There's people who will come by and bang on the window mm-hmm. to get my attention. I go, homie. Can't I guarantee you. you don't have anything that important to tell me. That was crazy. Yeah, but the thing is, he was, uh, he had it over the is top Is that the first of his... time you've seen homeless peen? Uh, no, I saw it on the subway in New York the first time I went. But first time you've first seen first homeless time peen I've in Cleveland. It, yes, this is the first time I've seen it in Cleveland. He had it over the top of his uh, boxers and shorts, and then he was jiggling his short, uh, like the waistband on his shorts. He wasn't touching himself which I think is an odd choice, hmm. right? Is that how you guys do it? You just jiggle the waistband until it's all done? Not really, no. <laughs> no, I, I think that guy was doing his own thing. Mm. Yeah, he's on a different wavelength. Oh, you just made a mess! He did. I looked over and I was like, oh my God, there it is. Look what's happening. <laughs> Look what's happening. Yeah. Well, well it. listen, your day's made, right? I guess. Your day is made. You saw some homeless peen. It was like so... Nasty. Nasty. <laughs> just out there. Hmm. But I guess where else are you going to pee? I mean, he's just in, on the sidewalk, though. Like, the, he didn't go up against the building. He didn't go into a corner. He just stopped. On the curb. You got to go. Curb. You got to go. Was there a grate there? Did he at least take the time to go, I'm going to pee on the street? From where I'm he was standing, there's a grate behind a, him. Oh, God. But I no. get knocked down. I get knocked down again. You're never gonna knock me down. I take a whiskey drink. I take a chocolate drink. And when I have to pee, I use the kitchen sink. <laughs> I sing the song that reminds me I'm a urinating guy. Mm-hmm. Wow. Okay, then. Pancake, okay, you mad you weren't down here for it? I'm just curious. The, the first peen we've seen in the new building, and I wasn't there for it, so. You're not gonna be here for any of them you'll be in your that's why i wish we had like a street cam but i don't know if that's legal i don't know if that's why i do have a huge penis yeah if it was me being on the side then everyone would just crowd Gag. around oh i do have a huge penis yeah oh i didn't get to measure it last this weekend i forgot i didn't You're get to measure, to measure it. it he was so yeah that was his big fun over the weekend he's like mm-hmm. i think i'm gonna do something fun this weekend i'm gonna measure my penis i was so busy have was very you done busy. that before I were you? huge penis what'd you do I went to. He was out wilding. I went to the club Friday. Yeah, he went out every um, night. I went out to Fremont to record a podcast, or well, I guess Clyde. Uh, that was Saturday, and yeah, Clyde is. Oh something. yeah, you did the yeah that's the boogered a fun up pod- podcast. Yeah, that's a fun podcast. Yeah, it's fun. His basement setup is amazing. Um, and then Sunday, I was like, I'm not going out. I'm just gonna stay in. Like, who cares about the Super Bowl? I just want to watch, watch Rihanna, anyways. And my friend was like. Uh, well, I, I can get you drinks and some food. I'm like, oh, well, I guess I'll come out for a little bit. You got to come pick me up, though. And so she came pick me up, and we went downtown. Hmm. So I, I was out. I did not. I was out all weekend. I have a penis question. Okay. How often do you guys measure them? Is that more of a teenage thing, or is it like every couple years? Just to every couple years. I don't know. To see <laughs> well, when you go to the doctor, like yeah. when my daughter turns, uh, yeah, yeah. when she has a birthday every year, I measure her on the wall. Yeah, are you doing yeah. that on the inner thigh? Or oh what? yeah, you making know tick it. marks. Yeah, I sure am. I'm being serious. Hoping though. to get to the knee. I assume that every guy has measured it at some point. At least once. So is it a one and done? Was for me. You're 19 at a college party. You're like, Bleh, or is this like a college party? No, in front know. of other people. No. I don't know. I don't rules? No, I don't. I don't think there are any rules. I think that probably every guy is lying if he says he hasn't done it at least one time. I just Doing it regularly, yeah. I don't think it, you're not going to, it, you're not going to get that much more out of it uh, once you're an adult man. You don't measure it. You're like, wow, I'm having a really good day today. I mean, there are days where you're like, today's looking real good. But I don't. There's days where yeah. it looks better than others? Absolutely. Huh. Because yeah. of temperature? There, there are good D days. I talk there, about that all the time. Yeah, like there's good D days where, like you know, sometimes you're, especially if you're worked up a certain way. Yeah, you can get a little bigger. You're bloated. Yeah, but in a good way. Yeah, bloated. It's a good way to put it. <laughs> hey, you bloated down there? Yeah. Oh, it looks great. Yeah, looks like it's gonna pop. Bloat me up. Awesome. 
So you didn't measure Cody? I did not. So unfortunately, I didn't. I was so busy this weekend, I didn't have time because I was like, I know I don't have a ruler, so I'm gonna have to dig into like my roommate's tools <laughs> to like to, to get a t- to get a tape measure. Because I'm like, what else am I gonna use? Or am I like gonna use, snaps shut on him? <laughs> or am I gonna use like a, a shampoo bottle for like, for reference or something so I can say, hey, I'm the size of this shampoo bottle. You know, guys do that. So I didn't do any of those. I felt weird using my roommate's tools. <laughs> I'm like, what you digging for? What you what you fixing? Nothing. <laughs> Fixing nothing to find out. I just want to see something. I'm measuring, you know, for my new spot. I just want to see if this will fit (laughs) for my new home. Boy, he's really overestimating what measuring requirements are required there. Did you get a new home? No, not yet. But as soon as he does, he will christen it by measuring his dong. So then you have to set aside time for that this week, or will you kick that down to the next weekend? I don't know. I don't because I again. I'm not. I'm not going to go buy a ruler. So that means I. I you must have a tape measure in your home. It's my roommates, it's and I feel weird about, about it. using it. Yeah, I feel weird about using that. Like that would be like. Using, oh, that you were talking about his tape measure. Yeah, I don't have any tools. All my carpentry tools are long gone. I think my mom probably has some of those. So again, I'm not going to go home and <laughs> look through my mom's stuff. Like, do you have my old tape measure from high school? <laughs> like, like I could go buy one, but I just it's not that deep. I'll figure out something. You get a Home Depot, get a yardstick. Yeah. Ninety nine cents. You it got a little hole on it so you can hang it hey, side yeah. of the fridge. Yeah. Right. Well, I'll try. Yeah, okay. I mean, I, I guess if that's information that you need, I, I think— I was like, do you guys want the results? Afterwards? No, again, it's it's one of those things where it's like it's done, I think, primarily when you're younger because once you're an adult man— It doesn't change. You got what you got, and yeah. you're either getting uh, you're either getting thumbs up or thumbs down from people and uh, whatever. And if you don't know— And a lot of dudes don't know what the hell they're doing anyway, so who cares what they got? Because they're like, oh, you you measure from— You know, they, they, they try to change the measurements to get a few extra inches or something. Well, no, like that's that. silly. I mean, that's <laughs> like a joke, but I mean, you know, everybody knows what they got. Yes. And you know if you're getting positive reviews. Right. On your use of it, and that's all that matters. So, yeah, maybe you do it one time I'm so after wrestling practice or something, you know. As far as being like a uh, size queen, I'm so glad I'm not that shallow. I'm, Boy, I'm me sh- too. Good pun. I'm shallow about a lot of things, but I, like, as long as you're not like, you know, micro size, Good I really for don't you. care. As long as you are not a micro penis, Pound Cake will talk to you. But you still got to be cute. So I'm just. You still got to be cute. I'm demeaning in other ways, but just not that. Yeah. Just don't have a micro penis. Well, this cat that was out here on the uh, sidewalk didn't have to worry about that, I guess. No, he did not. Mm-hmm. I've got a 